Hello there, welcome to my channel. Today we'll be studying something about uh, the osteology of skull. Before I see, before you are seeing this video, please have a skull in your hand and um, you know, I'll go very slow. Most of my subscribers tell that I'm a little bit fast. Pardon me for that. I'll go a little bit slow today because I am going to teach you only uh, from the Viva point of view in the exam in depth of uh, uh, skull certain features of skull which is perhaps not given even the best of the books it's a collective effect let's start skull is the bone here where the cranial vault where the entire face and the brain is supposed to be inside it now this particular structure has certain normas this what i'm using now right now is the norma frontalis norma lateralis okay both sides then we have here something called as the norma occipitalis, the posterior part with the occipital bone. And um, this one, the very most important one perhaps, the basalis, norma basalis, this one. I'll just come to you, I hope you can see that. Let me just focus now. Yeah, this is the norma basalis. Okay, people also call it as verticalis or the vertex of the skull, the most topmost part. Let's study now. Skull. I'll teach you um, the frontalis uh, and the verticalis and occipitalis as a single one, lateralis separate and basalis separate. The frontalis has got, why it's called the frontalis, it's got the frontal bone, this one. What I'm touching right now is the frontal bone, this bone, okay, the front bone. So remember, it's a single bone. The frontal bone has just a few features here. Well, this one, what I'm showing you, the most eminent part of it is called as the frontal eminence, the frontal eminence this particular part and then if I take take the liberty of showing you only the frontal bone this is the frontal bone separate for some frontal bone this is a frontal eminence and then what do we have here and this one the first one what do we have here is this one that is called as a supra orbital margin supra ciliary arch this is the supra orbital uh, foramen okay and this we have something here missing in this skull we have something called as the metopic suture Metopic suture is present in infants and it just fuses off as the age goes. But in some certain skulls, it may remain. And the next thing is this in other skulls, you may just see the remnants of metopic suture. Next, what do we study? This is the, as I mentioned to you, supraorbital foramen. This is the orbital cavity, right? This is a nasal cavity. Supra, this is the orbital cavity, hence the name supraorbital foramen and the very easy one, infraorbital foramen. Then we come across something called as the, uh, in, this, in the orbital cavity, I hope you can see this, uh, there is something down what I'm at, where my sketch pen is going down, this one, okay, this one is the infraorbital fissure and the top one is the supraorbital fissure, I hope you can see it, I hope you can see it, we have a, something very easy, I'll teach you later on, this is the infraorbital fissure, supraorbital fissure. Then we have certain points here. This is the glabella, this one, the glabella, the nasion. Obviously, it leads to the nasal bone, two in number, lacrimal bone here. Lacrimal bone is present here. And then this is the orbital plate, supraorbital plate, and the infraorbital plate. And we have here this one, what I'm showing you right now. I hope you can see it. Please do forgive me if you're not able to see this one. It's the infraorbital canal, which leads to the infraorbital foramen. Next. Uh, the examiner asks you to describe the frontalis, you just start in this way, okay? Then you go about the nasal cavity. We have certain things in the nasal cavity which is not seen much in this skull. I'll show you in this skull. Yeah, here we have in this particular skull, you have something. This is the same nasal cavity. And we have this one is the perpendicular plate of ethmoid, the vomer, this one, the broken lowermost part. And this one, the anterior nasal spine, perpendicular plate of ethmoid, vomer, anterior nasal spine, this one, what you're seeing on the either side, inferior nasal concha, independent bone, this particular part. Have a look, just one, two, three, and four parts in this region. Next, this is the intermaxillary suture, you know, the maxillary, suture. this is the maxilla, this is the maxilla, and uh, this is the maxilla, so we have the intermaxillary suture present here, and then we have a, about the incisors, very easy, incisifosa, in the mandible also you find this, about the canine, we have canine fossa. And this entire thing, what I'm just doing now, is the maxilla bone. Now, let me just let me just go a little bit deep into this now. Now, after this, studying this thing, let's go now here. Yeah, 
then uh, we have something called as the next part of it this in the maxilla we have just set and I'll just take the liberty of going in this region even though it's lateralis uh, okay I'll teach you in lateralis this part this one what you're seeing is the frontal sorry zygomatic process of frontal bone this particular part of the bone and this one which is going to meet it is the frontal process of zygomatic bone so obviously this entire purple coloring is the zygomatic bone with the zygomatico facial foramen of course you'll have a zygomatico temporal foramen also but this one facing towards the front with zygomatico facial foramen again i repeat this arrow going upwards will be the zyg the frontal process of zygomatic bone and the down arrow you can see one suture present here this particular suture is present prominently it divides between the frontal and the zygomatic bone hence the name frontozygomatic suture and it has this this is the front zygomatic process of frontal bone and this is the frontal process of zygomatic bone then what do we have here next what we have will be the uh, for the, this small portion there will be a part of it also that is the call is the frontal process of maxilla like this is the maxilla bone so it goes here there will be something called frontal process of maxilla which uh, you may just say or not it's just very important I'm going in depth here please do remember and uh, next we'll go back to this frontal bone then we have here the glabella the nasion let's go into the verticalis now this is the coronal suture coronal how do you remember this c english letter c is right right so we have c here coronal suture this one is a sagittal suture with missing here generally two parietal foramens parietal foramens this coronal sagittal suture will come and meet here in this region for the lambdoid suture which diversify right and left lambdoid suture are present here and you can see something very special here this is called as the sutural bone or the warmial bone and this portion is called as the lambda the named after the suture itself so what are the points what we have here lambda bregma we have something called glabella nation okay and here in the external occipital protuberance this is the occipital bone so occipital bone is very easy it's just it's a very big part it has lots of parts but occipital bone has few things can you observe something here the most outmost point is called as external occipital protuberance yes we have something called as internal occipital protuberance can you observe something here that i'm doing here yes this is the out inside part of it this is called as the internal occipital protuberance and then the external occipital protuberance will give off certain other features we have here oops, oops sorry just go here yeah that is we have something called as the highest nuchal line superior nuchal line inferior nuchal line you know all the muscle attachment of our uh, muscles that is the trapezius here and the uh, which comes and attaches in the backside in this region this is the external occipital crest a single straight line going downwards no confusions please yes nuchal line superior nuchal line inferior nuchal line and we have something called as external occipital crest external occipital protuberance and this external occipital protuberance most outside point you know we are anatomists we need to know all these nonsense words anion it's called as an anion what is it the anion pronounce it properly see the spelling properly please so that's about this uh, easy bone that is a frontalis the parietal bone, if I have not mentioned, please, parietal bone, two in number, single occipital bone, sutural warmian bone. We have the certain features in this region. And um, after this, let's now go into studying something called as lateralis. Okay, in the next video will be lateralis. Why I made the next video? Because it has a little bit more important points. Thank you.